this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I'm here with the Aston Martins and we're going to do a little bit of a discussion of um, Aston Martin and Audi cars when it comes to live racing. So this is going to be partially a showcase, partially a discussion of live racing with certain cars, but uh, I'm skipping the Apollo, which also is under the A brands, but it's a flash car and it's not very good at live racing overall. Uh, and it's easily bumped when you do tune it to be dyno. So that's a car I'm going to leave out of this discussion. We're going to start off with the Aston Martins. And we're going to start off with the Vulcan. Now I have the Vulcan AMR Pro as well, but I didn't build it uh, too much because, well, you know, lots of parts have to be uh, available. So since I already built the Milestone Vulcan, I'm going to go ahead and use this one uh, right now. Now this car is pretty good in that it has decently high EVO at a decently low performance point and it does beat dyno a little bit so it can beat dyno by about two tenths uh, pretty pretty consistently the only problem is of course depending on matchmaking you know you could run into opponents that can run a lot faster so I'm dyno in 10.65 but I'm likely to face opponents that can run 10.5 10.4s so it becomes one of those is it really that great at what it does or is it just kind of mediocre um, now as long as you can beat dyno you always have a good advantage overall in any lobby uh, and if you beat dyno naturally based on a particular dyno like th right now 10.655 i'm running 10.512 there uh, against another car that also beats dyno a little bit so i'm doing pretty good here that's a good live racer in my opinion and those are the kind of cars you want to look into building because they're they don't require any special tuning you just put it to the highest evo you can and they usually just require you to know when to time the nitrous uh, to push a little bit under the dyno so that you can be competitive however i can tell you again in this lobby you're going to have cars that can destroy dyno you're going to have cars that could run 10 twos 10 threes um, 10 fours or in the case of something like the ice charger if it's tuned properly I suspect it can it can just you know destroy me but that's that's only if they down tune it so they're taking the risk of a quicker bump versus your setup which has a higher Evo and is not set up as a dino buster so your chance of getting bumped naturally because of the way the Evo and uh, performance point ratio plays out is not as great so you have a good chance of controlling your runs and still win. So the Vulcan, one of the decent Aston Martins when it comes to live. And this time it did a 10.7, I did a 10.69, slightly slower than my dyno. This will help me keep my car competitive for longer. But again, 10.65 dyno can put you in a lobby that has a pretty wide scale of uh, possible range times. Let's see if we get someone else. I mean, for example, this car I know can run like 10 fours in this high 10 fours in this lobby because it beats dyno by about two tenths so this is one of those cars that can be partic uh, particularly difficult to run against and can get you bumped if you push too hard against it so let's see what it runs in here it's going to be a pretty fast run but again the Vulcan is relatively competitive and I can still have a good chance of getting somewhere against this opponent Okay, so around fourth gear, I'm sh and fifth gear, fourth, fifth. Okay, I'm I'm intentionally bouncing the needle on fourth because I was pretty close on his tail and I didn't want to overdo it. Still, pretty good run. A um, little fast for me because that's about one tenth and a half almost faster than my dyno. On the other hand, this one is about about right I would say for this lobby, so I I'm okay. Because, again, of my setup, I'm not expecting to get bumped too quickly here, uh, but the possibility of getting moved to a faster lobby is definitely there. Okay, so some of these cars in here, this one beats Dino, this one really beats Dino, that beats Dino. I mean, you're not racing against other cars that are not beating Dino. This one I'm not so sure about, that beats Dino. So you got a pretty tough group of competitors in this lobby that I'm in. Um, a little bit faster, a little bit slower. Uh, doesn't change that too much. Anything under 9 seconds all the way to about 13 seconds 
uh, you're going to get a lot of dino beating cars in there. So it becomes a game of do I beat dino more than you? And then if so, am I still competitive without getting bumped? Okay, so I'm moving up. He's coming back up. Okay, so again, I like the Vulcan because it's a high top speed car like the LB Aventador. It's a lot more controllable uh, in most racing situations because you're chasing people down and then you can kind of pull back and, and just pacing them down to the end of track. Okay, that's quite a few races with the uh, Vulcan. Let's move on to the next one uh, that I have somewhat built and that is the, I believe, the 1-1. One -one. All right, the 1-1 one -one is a good car. Uh, but again, it's sensitive to the upgrades, and depending on where you put the upgrades, you can lose some of this, but lose a lot of that too. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get this down a little bit and see if I can still maintain a decent point there. Not really. All right, so I have to, I unfortunately have to keep these stage five, so what I'm going to do is kind of take that out and see if I can bump that down a little more for some more point draw. Oh wait, I can take a stage six out of this. Eh, not the best looking Evo there. This is my problem with the 1-1. One -one. It, it is a dino beater. It's a great car, but under the current matchmaking, um, it's a little bit iffy with the, um, with the dino drop and also overall just not being as competitive as it should be. All right, so 11-2, which is interesting. It should be, let's see if I can get a jump here. If I can, then I got something here with the, oh, there it is. All right, so this is theoretically a 10-5 car and with the setup that I'm doing, 10, 4, 5, 5, 11, 0. So it's a, it's a 10, 5 car, 10, 4, 10, 5 car in the 11 second lobby. Uh, this is without utilizing all its upgrades. You can still upgrade this car pretty much more all the way into like the nines and still run, um, or the, the, the nines dyno running eights. But uh, again, the, the chance of getting bumped is uh, a lot higher. The less upgrades you use to get the higher the uh, EVO points, the better off you are. But that being said, um, this car will be pretty easy used to control uh, races here in slower lobbies, like any of these slower lobbies, 10 second, 11 second. Um, I'm just trying to keep the performance point down. You have to launch early because if you launch late or, well, you can launch late, but if you launch dead on, you're going to have a problem because... Um, you're gonna whoop, slow down a little too much there. What, what the problem is, um, you're gonna you're gonna run too fast or too slow. So that's that's my dyno basically. 11:03. That's 11:056. So I'm running people in a lobby where my dyno is. So that's good. But now the concern is I can't run too much under dyno. This car, unlike the Vulcan with the high Evo, will bump. So you have to be very careful how you run it. Um, so the uh, control is going to be important. I guess he's not racing. I'll pick someone else. Okay, so at least I'm going to be in the right lobby with the dyno. Um, hmm. I'll challenge him. It's going to be, this is going to be tough. These cars in this lobby is going to have something like 2000 EVO or 1900 EVO. Um, so he's going to have a lobby advantage and I don't. And that's going to be a rough race. Now I'm going to launch a little bit late this time instead of early. It does the same thing. It's either late or early works. And then it's a matter of just making sure I stay ahead of him. He's going to pull up real hard at the end here. Okay, so I did a little ta -ta 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 -ta, slow down. Okay, but I'm still way, see, see what I mean? That's a 11 second lobby. He's running 10 6 8. And that, I expected that. But um, that means I'm running a 10-6 in an 11 lobby, and my car doesn't have that high EVO. Uh, if I did this two, three times, I'm getting bumped. So I'm not racing them again. I really need to find slower opponents, or I'm going to have to now run really slow 
and possibly take a few losses just to kind of stay in lobby. So that's the disadvantage of this 177 in this kind of a setup. Now, if you don't beat Dino, of course, this card, because the way it lobbies is not competitive at all, that makes it not a fun live racer. So unfortunately, um, while it's okay and it's pretty decent, I don't put it at the uh, same level as, say, the Vulcan, because I think, in my opinion, the Vulcan is actually better. Right, so again, I'm ahead, and then I have to slow down, and then I have to risk losing. Ooh, I won that. Whew, that was close, but I have to cut it very close, and even then I'm running still too fast for my lobby. Um, and I feel that bump coming. It's coming. If I come back to lobby and all the cars change, that means the computer already bumped me. If, I, if the cars didn't change, I still have hope, but... Once you do enough races, you may still end up getting bumped when you leave and try to come back into lobby. For example, if uh, nothing's happening, when I leave like this, I go back in lobby, I'll see the same cars. But if, I, if I'm already somewhat tweaked on the matchmaking because of my under dyno runs, when I come back in, I'm going to see completely different cars. You see a little spinning and boom, different cars. And these guys either are going to be just a little bit faster, it might be the same lobby, with this different set of cars, but my gut feeling tells me it's probably going to be faster cars. Let me take one race. Win, win or lose, I'm not going to run very fast. I'm just going to test the lobby out. Uh, but I think guys in here, so I was running 10.7, and that would put me in 10.7 or 10.8 lobby. These guys could run something like 10.6s to 10.7s. Let's see what they run. Okay, so I'm going to still do my race. Okay, that was pretty slow. Maybe he's giving me the first run so he can rechallenge me. Or maybe I move to a slower lobby. Hey, I will, I'll take that. But again, he's running a win-loss. That's a C10 uh, Tiffany, which most people don't know how to get that under dyno. So I'm assuming he's running dyno or slower. So maybe I'm still in the... Uh, right lobby and winning not bad all right so one more race and we'll move on to a, another car in aston martin just to kind of move beyond this one let's try to find one that we know can be pretty steadily oh let's try this guy now you know this car can run at least three tenths under dyno so if i run ahead of him the whole way or somehow then i'm probably running well under 11 but let's see what we run so again, the 177 is not a bad car. Being that it's tunable, it's dyno beater. Um, but, you know, again, he's coming in pretty hard. I slowed down, but I didn't slow down that much. 10.8, I would say. 10.842, yep. So 10.957. So I might have actually ended up in a more competitive lobby when I jumped out and back in. Not going to complain. Um, at this point... I think we've seen enough of the 177. Let's go ahead and jump back out, take a look at another Aston that some people have had for a while and may have uh, built already, and that is the DB11. Now, interestingly, the DB11 actually isn't that bad. It's, a, it's not a dino buster in that sense, but what it is, is that it is another one of those cars that you don't need huge upgrades. In fact, you can use um, lower tier upgrades, okay, potentially even lower than that, and you can maintain a pretty high EVO. That's the key with this car. So it's, again, it's leveraging low upgrades, high EVO to be competitive. I'll be honest with you, it's not as competitive nowadays. Um, because despite the fact that it is a low performance point high evo car it's not as competitive as it was um, before more of these type of cars came along uh, this car was quite competitive but it's since lost a little bit of that edge i would say so i'm going to put it to 10.5 little on the high end of 10.5s and we're going to go ahead and take it into live it should be decently competitive, but it's, it's again, a car that needs to be launched right and shifted right. Uh, but everything done right, you'll run a little bit under dyno, like 10.5a, I'll run like a 10.5 flat. Um, the real question is whether I'm going to be competitive against 
what I know are dino beating cards in these lobbies. Okay, because I'm not going to beat dino. So the only advantage I'm going to have is from lobbying, not from uh, busting dino. So let's see how this plays out. And I got to shift right. So a little bit on the quick side with the shift. Some people don't like this uh, type of thing for this for this uh, car. And again, I was able to actually slow down slightly and still win that against a NSX. Assuming he's driving it properly, uh, I did pretty good there. Okay, now my dyno is a 10.5. I'm racing 10.7. Mm, not a bad thing. If you can lobby with an advantage like the Juke does, or like some other cars, or even that new 959 initially, that's a good thing. Hey, if I can win because I'm lobbied against slower cars, I'll take it. Okay, that's the strength of the DB11 is that low upgrade, high EVO setup. I've discussed that in other videos, but this is one of the stronger possible setups where, oops, oh, this is going to suck. <laughs> I did very poorly there. Okay, so bounced a bunch of gears, launch porty, and the Corvette's coming. Ah! Did I win? No, I lost. I mean, I, I kind of saw that coming. I mean, that that's really bad. My dyno's a 10.5. I ran a 10.769. Um, <clears throat> let's race them again. <laughs> I, I, I need to launch later. I need to shift earlier. Um, I need to concentrate. So, th again, this car is good, but it's not the easiest to drive. Uh, but it is a good car. I think uh, out of Aston Martins, I think this one, the Vulcan, uh, both are pretty reliable live racers, and there are people that like using them, and they can win quite often. Now I'm just going to try to do a proper launch and not hit too many times on red line on the gearing. So I can run close to my dyno. That's all I need. I don't need my dyno. I just need to be close. Okay. So again, try to last second tap. It's not going to slow me down by much, 10.664. So once again, a win. All right, I'm getting re-challenged again, I think. All right, let's do one more. I'm not here to swap. Um, I'm going to take them on directly one last time, and then we can switch on to the next Aston Martin. And we might be going to Audi soon, because I think I'm pretty much done. Oh, no, we got two more Aston Martins. Oh. Lay down the shift. Lay down that first shift will kill easily um, 500 to a tenth off of this car. And here he comes. Oh, he got me. All right. So I'm leaving this one a loser. Oh, well, see, he got 10.669. Now, you know what? Let me let me raise him because I got one pip of gas left. And this time we're going to go all out. We're going to we're going to just try to do the, our best here. That's the other good thing about the DB11. It's you actually drive it to win. You don't drive it to slow down. I'll race refuse. Thanks. Okay. All right. So I won't be racing it again. I'm going to add some gas, actually. And then um, we'll move on to the next car. Um, this car is worth noting that I am trying to slow down. I mean, I, I haven't really had an opponent other than uh, that final run where I screwed up that I would want to go all out. All right. Let's go all out against him. Let's see if I can get it under dyno, which is 10.54 is my dyno. So let's at least try to hit dyno this time. Okay, here we go. So main thing, ah, screwed up, screwed up. Main thing is trying to keep each shift um, pretty tight to your shift points on the um, on the early perfect. So you don't want to you don't want to bounce any needles. You don't want to do what I just did there, which is the double shift. Uh, still 10.663. Again, I'm still winning in this lobby with a 10.5 dyno running 10.6s. Very few cars get away with that. Okay. So, the, okay. All right. One more challenge. DB11, again, good car. Now, uh, this one right here does not beat dyno, but you can tune it to beat dyno. I learned that when I was doing showdown. And that is a Aston Martin, but that's a T4. We're not going into those yet. Okay, so let's try to see what I can do here. Ooh, he's keeping ahead of me, even though I'm slowly catching up. <sighs> winner, winner. That was kind of a rough race. 10.617 against 10.637. Uh, Getting tougher. Now, again, 
my dyno is actually faster than this. I'm running slower than dyno, but I'm winning. So, hey, I'll take it. DB11, reliable, uh, relatively consistent if you can get the driving technique uh, down pat. The problem is getting it down pat. I mean, you know, it's a bit of a quick shift, a little bit of rough on the launch. Uh, all around, a little difficult to drive, but not a bad car. And just to confirm I'm not lying about the dyno, let's take a look at it one last time, 10.542. I need some practice with this car, actually. You should be able to actually run slightly under the dyno, not like a tenth over like I'm doing. So I'm actually not doing the best demonstration here with this. Okay, the next one on the list, DBS, Super Leggera, Super Leggera. Good car, works like the 177, put some parts in, put some fusions in, okay? Lots of tire, and what you can do is get a 1000 EVO plus dyno beating tune. Now, here's a problem with this. Again, this is another one of those cars that, while it is over a thousand EVO, it's not much over a thousand. So it is doing basically 11 1, possibly running, say, a 10 6. That's wonderful, uh, except. That's kind of high, that's kind of low. With that kind of ratio, lobby matchmaking isn't always in your favor. The other issue is, of course, you have to slow down. Unlike the DB11 where I run it all out, this car, I actually have to run it slower. And I'm in the same lobby, I think, or very similar lobby to where I was before uh, with the um, 11, what, was it the 177, I think, was very close to this in the lobby. But let's go ahead and do our best here. So I know I can definitely outrun most people, but this guy is giving me a run for my money. Okay, I'm gonna let him win, you know why? I have a feeling I'm going too fast. Let's take a look at what the run was. 10.8, 10.8, all right. So it, it's, I don't like to go under too much. Um, and I wasn't sure how I was match made on that one. So I took took a little, Took a little out on the end there, but it wasn't a bad run. This one, is that a, oh, never mind. I'll raise him. Okay, let's go. So this is the Project Black S. Nice enough car, tops out pretty quick. So if I can pull past him, I can beat him. That's basically what it comes down to, because they shoot out of the, they shoot out pretty quick and then they kind of run out of steam about halfway down the track like that. And I'm way ahead, way ahead, way ahead. Okay, maybe I lost, ooh, I won. Okay, so again, a little twitchy to control this car, but keeping it a little bit slower than 11 and barely winning that. I could have just lost that just as easily as I would have won that. That was a bit tight. So, Super Legara, Dino Beating, 177, clone in a sense they almost work the same way so both cars have the same kind of play style if you want to use it in live as a uh, controlled uh, dyno beater okay another porsche seeing a lot of these guys because they were given out for free and everybody wants to race their free car right so i see a lot of these being used they're pretty effective they do beat dyno so they're actually decent cars and what they are is they're going to be like a high top speed car. So I'm going to have this guy chasing me down at the end here. Boom, pass me. That's the normal. Let's take a look where he ran though. I think 11-0. And I'm not going to beat up a uh, newer player with, with his free car. It just doesn't uh, seem right. Now, control is part of the game here. So any car that beats Dino, but is hard to control the slowdown isn't a good dyno beater so uh, multi-gear cars the more gears you have the, the more uh, minute control you have over the car the better the car that basically has huge long gears and if you downshift you instantly lose like a you know 60 miles per hour that's not so good because they're harder to control so not a bad car uh, much like the 177 both of these are pretty challenging if you want to use them now this one's not really built I'm not going to um, I'm not actually going to run it in live. I'm still building it, but I'll just show you something that um, is 
obviously the case with most Aston Martins, and that is they all have a little bit of uh, capability to beat Dyno depending on where you have your gearing and um, upgrades at. Now this one doesn't look like I'm getting much leeway here. I think I know there is a drop somewhere around here or maybe there is, oh, there it is. Okay, so it's kind of low on Evo because it's not upgraded all the way yet, but 12.8, uh, 12.3, so about a half a second dyno beating, which when translated to actual driving is more like 0 0.4 or 0 0.3 and change. So it's within the margin you want, but again, this car right now without more upgrades, not enough, um, not enough Evo and uh, overall, just not worth using in live. Anything under a thousand Evo, I'm not too keen on. All right, I'm going to skip this car simply because I didn't build it. Um, don't have enough fusions. I I think this is a good live racer, possibly. I just don't have one to play with. Um, all right, Vorsteiner RA VRS. This is Audi. So we're, we're getting to the end of A here. This is a great car. Um, the higher the upgrades, the less great it is let's put it that way uh, so it's always better to have less upgrades and a decent amount of evo than super high upgrades and then a lousy amount of evo so that's really the balance i'm always looking for i want to try to get the car's performance point down while maintaining a high evo and if a part drop does not drop much in way of these points, I'd rather leave it in because, quite frankly, there's no reason not to. Okay, so I'm not seeing a whole lot of benefit here with most of these being dropped. So let's go ahead and stick with 701 here. And let's take a look at Dino here. So 2.35, 0100, you know, you're, you're looking at right now more close to the max Evo here, which is here and that's 9.4 right on a 305 mile per hour which is actually about a little more than so i got a little more here i could probably tweak so this is optimal so to speak 9.4 well if i replace this gear or this gear with that gear's location something like this or this which which is a much more aggressive change you will get 9.9, but you'll still be able to run pretty good. Now, the only downside to this is, of course, uh, with the Vorstein and also the regular RAV10, this kind of just shifting the shifting the uh, final drive around is enough. Sometimes it'll have a more aggressive uh, actual effective down to versus. So zero RPM drop, that tells me there is a ability to beat Dino. So with the RPM drop, I should run dyno. Without the RPM drop, late launch, early launch, I can now run under dyno. So 9.9, .9, let's go ahead and run under dyno, and then I'm going to take it to live and see how it match makes. With the high performance point, a eh, little tricky there, but should still be somewhat competitive. So here, I'm going to launch late, and nitrous second. And we're going to run it all out to see where it is. Now, what do we have here? 9.5? 9.5 on A. 9.9. Let's go check it out in the lobby. 9.9, 9.8 running. So I should be seeing accurate NSXRs with elite level upgrades and other top tier upgraded, deleted T4 cars. And mostly T5s otherwise. Let's take a look. So, in SXR, as expected, so I should be somewhere in the right lobby, although I suspect some of these guys will be running close to a 9.5. But let's race the SF90. Not a car that easily beats Dino, so this is actually a good car to kind of gauge where I'm at. Um, it tends to run right around Dino, unless this guy has a tune that I'm not aware of or a shift pattern I'm not aware of. Here we go. I'm getting out there on the front, and what do we get? This should be a 9.7 run, I think. 
9.6652. So he lobbied pretty good. I'm surprised. Now, 9.9, 9.6310, I'm, I'm kind of risking, uh, risking a bump here by doing this. The other possibility is my card's already slightly bumped. Let's try again. So Vorsteiner, definitely a good car um, because, again, it, it's pretty flexible in its capability to be set to beat Dino. So I tend to run it in a certain way, slow down a little at the end, and generally can have pretty good control over winning. Now that's a newer player, so I, again, I'm not sure how well his car is set up. Um, I could very well lose to the NSXRs in here. Let's find one and race it. That'll give me a good idea. SMR, that is obviously Elite Upgraded. So this car could easily run... Uh, my money's on a low 9.6 to high 9.5s, because that's really where they are at. If he runs a 9.7, that actually makes me happy, because that means I'm in a good lobby, and that SF90 must have super high EVO for the lobby and had a... Whoops. Oh, that's going to... I'm going to lose this one. I don't know what I did. I thought I launched late, but I didn't, obviously. So, I do my 9.9. What did that car run? 9.6? 9.59. See, that's what I'm saying. So, these guys are 9.59. I'm on a 9.9. Dino, that's not so healthy. Um, probably need to tweak the settings a little bit. I could probably bump this car to 9.8 something, do a 9.4 and change. But again, it's... That might be a little too aggressive, and you may have an issue with getting bumped in this Warsteiner. Actually, the Warsteiner works better um, if you lower the final drive, not lower the final drive, but lower the parts a little bit, run it in a slightly slower lobby. The other one that uh, works the same way as the Warsteiner, but in some ways even a little more flexible, is the regular Audi R A V 10 2016. Uh, let me see. I have this pure stage five. I don't think I need it like that. I can actually try to get it down a little bit. The problem with this car, and and, and it's actually the problem I should say with most these um, most these older T5s is compared to the new stuff, they just have really high performance point for the same Evo. It's kind of hard to get low Evo setups on these. A lot of times they just don't like it. And then you lose a lot of EVO really fast when you downgrade parts. It's real hard to keep your um, overall points above 1,000. Now, you definitely want over 1,000 EVO. You don't want anything less than that. So let me tweak the tune here a little bit. And let's see if I can possibly win some races with it. So this is a 10.965. See if I can get up oh, there. It is max Evo range is closer to ten three, right? And there's that little drop right there puts it to ten four nine from ten three eight. But if you put it right to that gear, you're now at ten six. You, you'll be at 10.65 running about a 10.4 and change if everything goes right. So the problem with this one is that it's actually not as effective as if I put this gear over here like this. Then you're looking at about a 1,000, but you actually will beat Dino by far more. So it's really your call which way you want to do it. But I can tell you 10.69, I'll be lucky to do like a 10.4. I'll probably be more like 10.5 something, which eh, it's... It's good, but it's not super competitive. So, but the it's got enough EVO to sacrifice that it can still get a decent run. Now, I don't have the launch button on this, so we're doing it purely on regular launch. And let's just run it all out and see what it runs. So I'm in six, and it is about high ten fours. I think is what I ended up with. 10.43, okay, so it is Dino in 10.69, running 10.43, two tenths under Dino, a little over two tenths, perfect margin for most live lobbies, assuming I'm in the right lobby. Of course, I should really be 10.62 Dino or 10.6 or 10.8 Dino rather than 
in the middle there is not as good. It's still effective, but not as good. Okay, let's see. I don't recall if this car was previously bumped through something, so I'll find out soon enough. If I start seeing guys running like 10 threes in here against me, then obviously uh, it's already bumped and I need to reset the car before I try to do more videos. But <coughs> 10, 6, 9 again against possibly 10, 3 cars. All right. We'll find out real fast just how good the other guy's car is once I launch. All right. If I don't put a large margin on him, then I'm going to lose. And that was still a loss. And that was not even slowing down. So it's, oh, well, actually it's not too bad. 10, 6, 10, 5, 9. I could beat him. So I just launched late and um, stay in it. I launched early that time, which actually turned out to be slightly slower on the run. So 10, 6, 5 is what I have. I'm going to run. 10 5 something safely, so let's try it. All right, this time late launch, same deal, and I'm going to see if I can't get a 10 6, 10 4 something to 10 5 run. Let's go ahead and get that. right so six gears where it, you can see it pulled ahead a little bit 1052 against 1068 right now does T C10 might be able to run a lot faster I don't know um, doesn't seem to be impressed by my 105 run that's not a good sign okay let's go ahead and try it Oh, zero RPM drop. Wasn't late enough. This one would theoretically only run dyno. Okay, I slowed down a little bit. I, I think um, it's a fair enough race. 10.8, um, wow. So he ran kind of slow. All right, well, I'll, I'll take one or two more runs with him, and then I think we're done anyway with Audis. So that is your kind of your Aston Martin to Audi car. So what I'm going to do in a different video, I'll start with Bachmano and then move through to Bugatti and kind of live race some of those, give you guys some ideas of how these cars, at least how I find them to be uh, in the live lobbies. Okay, here we go again. Again, this the problem with the Audi R8 V10 is not that it doesn't beat Dino or that it can't beat Dino by a lot. The problem is that the Evo points are just not that impressive when you do it. And if you do that, it always hurts your bottom line, which is your chance of getting bumped is greater than high Evo cars that basically runs under dyno. So right there, that's what we got. He didn't re-challenge me, so I'm assuming he's done. And that gives us an excuse, or give me an excuse at least, to go ahead and go back to lobby. And my wild card is done as well. Not that I got that many races in, but hey, um, good chance to get a few points and still uh, showcase the car. So that is the Audi uh, R8 V10. Good car overall. Now, the thing about this one is it's not a bad car either. I just didn't build it because um, I don't want to spread all my parts out too thin. Uh, so I kind of left it alone. But some people swear by this one as well. Uh, although I think um, personally... The best one for me has been this or the Warsteiner. They're both pretty good cars. So if you get an Audi, Audi R A V10, definitely build it. It's uh, well worth building. Uh, kind of recap, DB11 I kind of like because you can run it all out. Low uh, upgrade, high EVO. You can get up to like 1,900 with just a few more points here. You can get 1,900 EVO. Very good car. This, the 177, both are okay because you can down tune them and control the lobby but they're easier to bump and ultimately a little trickier to control and then you have the Vulcan which again is if you can maximize this minimizing that this is also 
a uh, pretty reliable car in live. And the Apollo, well, uh, if you didn't pay money for it, don't you didn't lose out on too much. So don't feel bad. And that is the A's. And then we'll deal with the B's, which is your Bachmann, Bentley to Bugatti and BMW cars. That should be an interesting uh, and probably longer video because Bugatti has quite a few good live racers, whereas Bentley does not seem to have any good live racers. And these two BMWs are actually okay, not great. Um, but Bugatti's, it's going to be a long discussion because just look at how many of them there are. All right. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, joining me for this video. Feel free to uh, let me know what you think of the A brands when it comes to Tier 5 live racers. If you have any specific questions about one of these cars uh, and it's a question I can actually answer. I will try to answer them. Just post them in the comments. If you like the video, leave a like. Um, if you like my videos and would like notifications, then uh, subscribe so you can get those notifications. And as always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.